So when I was in college, I badly needed extra money because I was paying my own way through. I came from a poor background. I had to take out student loans. And not only did I have to pay for myself, but I also was taking care of my dad and I needed to buy food and I needed to pay for transportation expenses. And of course, what I found on the internet was useless surveys that make like one to three dollars per hour. Also, I found stuff like Amazon FBA courses, Shopify courses, drop shipping, all this sort of thing where yes, you know, once in a while, you might find a good course where you can actually make money from it, but it's probably still going to take like a year and you're going to have to invest a bunch of your own money up front. And the truth is most of those courses are either not that good or they're straight up made by fake gurus. So I didn't want to go down that route, of course. And then there was also the obvious stuff like doing Uber or delivering food or donating your plasma. Now, of course, I did do a little bit of that sort of thing. Like I donated plasma, for instance, but I don't really like needles and you can only donate plasma once every two weeks or something. And it's capped in terms of how much money you can make. So I looked elsewhere in order to make extra money. Then I finally stumbled upon a way of making money, which is perfect for college students. And I was able to make over $100 per hour. And surprisingly, this method is especially good for college students. You actually have an advantage if you're in college and I'll reveal exactly how that works in just a moment. And yes, this is something that anyone can do, but I actually don't recommend doing it the exact same way I did. And again, I'll explain exactly why that is. But let's go ahead and start with the first one on the list, which is genealogy. And by the way, I'm going to be ranking all of these with a student money score from one to 10 with 10 being the best. And I'm going to be talking about really important factors like how much money you can make, how easily you can get into it, how long it takes to get into it. So basically like the barrier to entry, as well as what value the skills that you learn are going to give you later on in life. So about five years ago, I went to a family gathering and one of my uncles was deeply studying sort of like the family history. And this was something that was really interesting to me because I honestly didn't know that much about my family history. So for instance, my last name is Hummison. It's actually not Hummus, believe it or not. I just, that's just my nickname here on the channel. It's Hummison, which means son of Hummus. So I always thought that I was sort of like a Viking ancestor because that's very common with people of Scandinavian descent, right? So son of Peter is Peterson, Johnson, etc. But what I found out is apparently some of my Viking ancestors actually went to Scotland and decided to settle there. And all of this was found out by my uncle who did extensive research on this sort of thing. And he hired a bunch of people to help him. And the people that he hired were genealogists. And believe it or not, it's actually not all that hard to get into genealogy. So for instance, these types of jobs can be found on different freelancing sites like Upwork or Fiverr. And oftentimes you might even get hired by somebody to investigate their family. And in some cases, if you're already in a family where there's a lot of people who are interested in this, they may fund your investigation. Now, if you look at Glassdoor, genealogists make about $80,000 on average, which is really good. And this is something that you can actually do part time while you're still in school. And many of the requests that you get when it comes to genealogy are going to be incredibly simple. It's basically just looking people up on a website. Now, some of the requests are going to require a lot more investigative skill and a lot more time. And in those cases, you'll probably make a lot more money. But yeah, this is actually a really good one. And I'm going to give it an eight out of 10 money score. Next on the list is going to be tutoring. And this is one where when I was in college, I actually started doing this. So when I was in college, I wanted to become a pharmacist. And in order to get into pharmacy school, I had to take this test called the PCAT. That's the pharmacy college admissions test. Now I ended up studying extremely hard for this test. I also did a ton of research to figure out what the best resources out there were, because to be honest with you, a lot of the resources that most people were studying turned out to not be very good. So I ended up taking the test. I scored extremely well on it. I almost had a perfect score. And my study partners that I was studying with told a bunch of other people about my score. And all of a sudden I started getting hit up by a bunch of people who wanted me to tell them how I scored so well on the test. So the first few people I went ahead, I told them everything I knew for free, but it got to the point where there were so many people asking for my time that I started charging money. And at first I wasn't charging all that much money at all, $30 an hour, something like that. But then as more and more people asked me, I started charging more and more money. And eventually it got to the point where I was charging over a hundred dollars an hour. I believe the best that it ever got was about $180 an hour I was making. And all of this was because I scored really well on a super random niche test. Now, how does this apply to you? Well, if you have taken a test like the ACT, SAT, and you've scored well, this could be really good for you. But how about AP tests or IB tests in high school, right? So let's say you took the AP chemistry test or something like that, and you scored really well on it. That's something you could tutor people for. Or let's say you got into a college that a bunch of people want to get into. That's another thing you could tutor people for. Or let's say you're taking 
taking the MCAT or the LSAT because you want to get into medical school or law school, that's also something you could tutor people for. And also, if you're good at a subject that most people aren't good at, like mathematics or organic chemistry, again, that's something you could charge a lot of money for. And let's say you're not good at any of that stuff. At the very least, you can tutor people in English because I assume that you are listening to this, you can understand English and you can get paid pretty good money for that as well. So yeah, tutoring is a phenomenal way to make money in college, maybe the best possible way you can make money right off the bat doing this. This gets a 10 out of 10 money score. Next on the list is going to be an online influencer. And this is one that I see around on YouTube quite a bit, of course. And of course, this is something where I started it myself. The first video that I ever uploaded to YouTube was all the way back in like 2010. And I played this game called RuneScape. Now, a lot of people might know RuneScape. Uh, I was really into it for many years. I probably wasted a lot of time on it, but there's also a lot of good memories I had there. But yeah, I would PK people on RuneScape, which is basically where you fight other people. And then I would upload those videos to YouTube. Now, I never planned on becoming like a famous YouTuber or anything like that. I basically just did it for fun and to be able to show my friends some of my best PKs. And I didn't start making any real money on YouTube until about 2020, right? So this is something that I did for a hobby. I also watched like thousands of hours of YouTube. And then eventually I started doing it myself and I ended up making money from it. Now, one thing that I will say is there has never been an easier time to become an online influencer. It is much easier now than it was five years ago, for instance. And there's also never been an easier time to actually make money as an online influencer. Most of the time in like 2015, for instance, people who uploaded videos, even the ones who were extremely popular, were not making enough money to actually quit their job and do it full time. But now it's actually quite easy for you to do this comparatively. But with that being said, this is not something that you can do very easily. But there are going to be some people watching this video that are in a position where they would be able to grow relatively fast. And let me tell you who those types of people would be. So I've seen a lot of people who, for instance, go to Ivy League universities, leverage the fact that they got into an Ivy League university to grow their channels extremely quickly. So for instance, let's say you're watching this and you're going to Yale, Harvard, Princeton, etc. You can go out and interview people from Harvard and upload those videos on YouTube, do some pretty good editing. And there's a very good chance your video is going to get a lot of views. Another thing you can do is talk about how you were able to get into an Ivy League or prestigious university. You can also do like a day in the life of a Harvard student or something along those lines. Same thing goes if you're a medical student or a law student at a prestigious university. And same thing goes if you're watching this and you're like a doctor or something like that. It's actually extremely easy for you to grow a channel if you do it in the right niche and you're in the right situation. But yeah, I have to be honest with you. This is one where you're probably not going to be able to make money right away. So for that reason, I'll give this one a six out of 10 money score. One where you can make money right away though is content writing. And that's the next one on the list. Now, one thing I want to say about content writing is in my opinion, all good content online, whether it's video, podcast, audio, et cetera, comes from good content writing. That's right. I hate to burst your bubble. I hate to tell you that Santa's not real, but most of the videos that you watch online are relatively planned out. You know, I have a script right here for this video, for instance, Mr. Beast probably scripts like 99% of the stuff that happens in his videos. And in order to do that, you have to have a team of content writers. Now, it's very difficult to find people that are able to write scripts for YouTube videos because it's such a niche skill. It's different than any other type of writing. And there's some specific things you need to know in order to be successful with it. But it's not just YouTube. You can write blog posts, articles. You can write for a newsletter, for instance. There's all kinds of other ways that you can do content writing. Now, there are a ton of testimonials from people who make full-time living from content writing on Reddit. I'll have some of them pop up on the screen. You can pause the video if you want to check them out. But this one is great because you can make money pretty much right away. You can do it in a job, like work for a website. You can do it as a freelancer. And then down the line, once you learn these skills, this is going to help you start a successful online content business. So this one, I'm going to give a nine out of 10 money score. Next, let's talk about graphic design. And the story I have for this one is a few months ago, I met a big YouTuber and I was picking his brain on how he made thumbnails. And he told me that he makes something like eight to 10 thumbnails for each video, right? He makes like eight to 10 thumbnails and then he picks one of them for the video. And then, you know, sometimes he might switch it out if the video is not performing well. But this is how important thumbnails are on YouTube. And who creates thumbnails? Well, graphic designers do, of course. Now, graphic design is something where you need to niche down, right? You can't just be a generalist. You want to be a specialist and do something like thumbnail creation, for instance. And for the example of thumbnail creation, a thumbnail can literally make or break your video, right? So someone like Mr. Beast, for 
for instance, if his thumbnail has like, I'm just going to make this up, but like an 8% click through rate versus like an 8.5% click through rate might be the difference between getting 10 million views and 100 million views. And the reason for that is because Mr. Beast is competing with all of the other challenge channels who might have a slightly better thumbnail. So if you can make the thumbnail just like five or 10% better, get five or 10% more people to click on it. That is the kind of difference that you can have. But with that being said, this is one of those skills that does take a long time to learn and master. This is not something you're going to get good at in a month or two months or three months. It's probably going to take you six months at least to get really good at thumbnail creation. So for that reason, I'm going to give this one a four out of 10 money score. Next, let's talk about digital marketing. And this is one that I talk about quite a bit on this channel because it's such a good career path for people to go down. And it's especially good for people when they are young. So I have literally interviewed like dozens of people at this point on the channel who have been able to get digital marketing jobs without the need for a college degree or previous experience. One of them was James, who was able to land a job as a 16 year old. And of course, there are a bunch of different digital marketing niches that you can go down. So some of the biggest ones are going to be SEO, which is search engine optimization. There's also pay-per-click, there's copywriting, etc. And this is one of those skills where it can be really good as a side hustle, could be really good in freelance, and it can be really good to get a full-time job. And the thing about marketing and specifically digital marketing is they tend to target younger people. And so people that are young tend to have a better idea of what type of content, what type of creative is going to appeal to people from their generation. And so younger people do tend to be a little bit better at digital marketing and that gives them an advantage. So yeah, this one is phenomenal. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 money score. Now, before I go to the next one, one of the things I want to let you know is if you know a friend or a family member that is maybe going down the wrong career path, they're getting like a useless degree, something like that, or they're just confused about what to do in life, or they have no idea what they want to do, definitely share this video with them. And the reason I say that is because I was talking to a YouTube specialist the other day, and they told me that my channel has a weirdly large amount of people who share my videos in places like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger. And I think that's really cool because this is kind of like a grassroots movement. People see videos like this, they see that they're super valuable, I'm actually giving you really good career advice, and they share it with other people. And if you did get this video sent to you by somebody else, go ahead and comment down below and let me know. The next one on the list is going to be an IT help desk specialist. And this is another one where you can get into it extremely quickly. I just did a few interviews on my channel where someone was able to get into it in 14 days and 10 days. And the guy who was able to land this job in 14 days did it without using a computer. That's right. He actually got the job with just an iPad. And one thing I've talked about on this channel quite a bit is the technology industry is probably the best industry that you can possibly work in. I mean, the pay is great. The job satisfaction is great. You can get a remote job easily. The work-life balance is great. I mean, just everything is amazing in the tech industry. And this is probably the easiest way that you can get your foot in the door with your first entry-level job. And then from here, you can move on to all kinds of other jobs. You could move up in IT. You could go to cybersecurity and then software development. And then you could get into tech sales, all kinds of different options. Once you've got your foot in the door in the tech industry, it's very easy for you to move around to other positions. So yeah, IT help desk specialist, awesome career to get into. There are many people who actually do this while they're still in college. And a lot of them end up just going ahead and quitting college because this is just a better option. So I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10 money score. Next, let's talk about video editing. And this is a super valuable skill, but I'm going to preface this by saying that you need to be really good at whatever video editing that you do. So for instance, if you are a specialist and you only edit YouTube videos, you really need to be good because the truth is if you're in the United States of America or Britain or Canada watching this, there are many people in other countries that have lower cost of living that are also really good at video editing, right? So business owners out there, are they going to hire somebody for like, you know, $3 an hour who's really good at video editing or $30 an hour who's really good at video editing? I mean, which one do you think makes more sense? So if you want to be competitive, you really need to niche down. Just being a YouTube video editor is not enough. You want to also be what's known as a retention editor. That's somebody who is really good at increasing the retention of a YouTube video. And if you want to go even further, what I recommend doing is niching down into a particular niche on YouTube. So for instance, you could edit videos for the personal finance niche. Every single niche sort of has their own meta or feel to it. Like there's certain niches where comedy is a good thing, like all the different channels kind of do comedy. There's certain niches where you don't really need to add comedy. So learning the nuances of each of these niches are going to make you more valuable as a video editor. And you could also probably start off on TikTok or Instagram, something like that, doing the more short form stuff. But with that being said, to get really good at 
with this is going to take a ton of practice. This is not something you can do super fast. So for that reason, I'm gonna give this one a seven out of 10 money score. Next one on the list is going to be web design, also known as UX or UI design. So this is exactly what it sounds like. You're basically going to be designing what a website looks like or what some sort of software product looks like. Now, this one is relatively easy to get into. You do not need a college degree to get into web design. But with that being said, it's not going to be super quick. One really good way to sort of dip your toe into this and start your portfolio would be to take one of the Google professional certificates. They're like $39 per month. I talk about them in other videos. And they're a great way for you to kind of uh, put your, you know, just dip your toe in without having to spend a bunch of time, effort and money. So as a web designer, you need to understand the artistic side of things, but you also have to understand the analytical side of things as well. So for instance, you might do split tests where you put the buy button on the left side of the page, and then you put the buy button on the right side of the page. And you notice that for whatever reason, when you put it on the left side, 10% more people buy it. And that kind of thing can make a huge difference in a company's bottom line. So although I do really like this job, you can do it freelance, you can get a job. Um, this one is a little bit harder to get into than a lot of the other ones on the list. It is a great option for people who want to get paid to do artistic things, which let's be honest, it's really rare to be able to get paid to do art. So for that reason, I will give it a seven out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be software development. This is one I have talked about so much on this channel, phenomenal skill to learn, probably the best job that you can get just objectively speaking. There's this subreddit called the financial independence retire early movement or the fire movement. And uh, basically like most of the people who are trying to retire at 30 or 40 who work jobs have jobs in software development. So when you type in software developer, which is like the entry level role, you're still going to see like $95,000 a year. And when you move into the more of the upper level roles, you can be making 200, 300,000, 500,000, even a million dollars a year in software development. You can look at websites like levels.fyi and see what companies in Silicon Valley and New York are paying people. Now, with that being said, this is not the easiest skill to learn. This is not something you can learn in like three months unless you're a genius. This is probably going to take you six months to a year to get into. But if you are able to learn it, you're able to get your first entry level job. It can be phenomenal. Now, what I would actually recommend doing is get a job in IT help desk first. So get your foot in the door in the technology industry and then start teaching yourself software development. This is probably going to be the easiest way with taking the least amount of risk that you can get a software developer job. But yeah, overall, this one is going to get a 10 out of 10 money score. Next one on the list is going to be a data entry clerk. And I decided to include this one on the list because this is a super easy job for you to land. This is one of those jobs where you could honestly land it in probably about two weeks easily. So if you're in a position where you really need to make money, you really need to get a job, this is one that I would likely go for. But with that being said, there's not a lot of upside to this job. You're literally just going to be doing data entry all day long. It is absolutely mind numbing work. You're also not going to be making that much money. It's basically like a little bit above minimum wage, maybe. And you're not going to be learning valuable skills that are going to help you in other areas of your life. It's literally just data entry. Basically, anybody could do it. There's a couple jobs that kind of fall under this category a little bit. Another one is transcriptionist. Very easy to get a job, but you're not going to learn that many valuable skills. And then another one is going to be customer service representative. So all three of those are jobs that you can get relatively quickly. They tend to be relatively low paying, but if you need money right away, you can get into those jobs quickly. But overall, I'm going to go ahead and give data entry a score of three out of 10. So if you're a student who has no idea what to do with their life, you have no idea what career path you want to go down. One of the main ways that I recommend figuring out what your skills are and what career path might be good for you is to take the Google certificates. And the Google professional certificates basically are a way of showing you what career paths are in demand because that's why Google created them. They created them because colleges were not creating enough people who have these skill sets. And in order to take these certificates, it's only like $39 a month. So it's ridiculously cheap. And you could take, for instance, the data analytics certificate. And if you discover, hey, I really don't like this, then you go ahead and move on to the digital marketing certificate. Or you might move on to like something to do with software developing, or you might move on to something to do with IT. And eventually you're probably going to find something that you actually enjoy and like. And these certificates will look great on your resume. They'll really make you stand out against other students. And I actually made a video on the top five Google professional certificates, which you can check out right here.